Hey guys, this is Claudia here from the Bookkeeping Experts. We're back for more, back for more end of the year. I know a lot of you are getting ready to file your taxes, getting everything in order. And today we're going to talk about a very popular subject, which is how do I record transactions that I pay with a personal credit card, personal funds, um, or personal checking account. How do I count, account for that in QuickBooks Online? All right, that's exactly what we're gonna talk. So we're gonna go straight into QuickBooks Online. Here we go. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is to create an account to clear those transactions. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the left-hand side. Uh, keep in mind, I always work on the accounting view. If you don't know how to switch, on the top right hand side gear you can switch to let's see if i click here i would switch to business view uh, but if you're on the business view you want to click here for accountant view all right so here it is uh, accountant view uh, on the left hand side you can click on accounting and chart of accounts and we're gonna see chart of accounts and we're gonna create a new account and this is going to be a bank okay and it's a clearance account so i'm going to call it let's say it's a, a checking account and i'm i'm just going to put um, personal funds clearance okay we're going to go ahead and save that okay so i have the personal funds clearance account and now i'm going to create an expense so we're going to click on the plus new we're going to create an expense and i'm going to say is books by betsy or i can do something else let's see um that is equipment rental and it's going to ask me if I want to auto populate and I want to say no because uh, for this client or for this vendor it's not always the same thing so that's what QuickBooks is asking you and so you got to be careful about this one and see where it says payment account you want to change it to the personal clearance account okay now in oh, right over here you're going to select the category of this uh, expense. I'm going to say it's equipment, rent or lease. And we're going to say it's $200. Okay. And you can put a reference number here, such as a invoice number or whatever you want to add. And you can attach the receipt. So if you were if you're recording something, you you um, use your personal credit card. I always advise to attach your receipt to it. Okay, I whenever you can attach your receipt to a transaction, go ahead and do it. Um, so if you need to refer back to it, you can just go and take a look at that, um, that attachment to that receipt. So we got everything ready to go here. So now we're we're ready to save and close and make sure you take a look at the payment date make sure that the payment date is whatever date that it actually happened we're gonna save and close here we're gonna record another one now um expense um the same thing the same thing works for income transaction as well let's suppose that somebody just paid on your personal account we're gonna talk about that as well. So let's say that this one is called telephone. See that I have the the personal funds clearance account selected here. I'm just gonna select my utility accounts. And I'm just gonna say that it's $150. And it's not billable. And there's no customer attached to that. So we're gonna go ahead and save and close. And I I sell, I recorded these these expenses 
into QuickBooks Online. But take a look at the personal personal funds clearance account is negative 350. So what does that mean? And you don't want to leave it as negative 350. You want to clear that out. What it means is that there is expenses being recorded out of this account, but there is no income. So no income coming coming in because this is just a clearance account, so you have to record it manually. Now the next step is to move these, these 350 out of this personal clearance account and, um, and add it someplace else, like an equity account, like owner's investment. So I like to duplicate my page so you can always click on the top of the, on the tab, on the right click on the tab and then click on duplicate and then you can have two screens at the same time. It works a lot when you are working in QuickBooks Online. So here I can see how much is the amount and here I can do a journal entry to remove or you can do a transfer as well. Either one works. Okay, so first of all, I want to uh, clean my personal funds clearance account. So I want to debit $350 because I'm debit in QuickBooks Online means that you are adding money to it. Okay, it kind of sounds the other way around, but <laughs> accounting terms. All right, and here I am going to select my owner's investment. Uh, Select investment and see what we have here. This is a simple account. And there is not a there is not an owner's investment here. So I'm just gonna add that. So I'm gonna I can click on add new right from here. Make sure you don't select bank. Because <laughs> that's not a bank. That's an equity account. And we're gonna um, select partner contribution. Or you can do just owner's equity and then name it owner's investment. Either one works. I like owner's investment. And you can put a description here. Uh, remove balance, balance paid with personal funds. I can copy and paste here. And I can go ahead and save. Right, so if I go back here, I can refresh the page. Usually I just click somewhere back here. And voila, that personal funds clearance account is zeroed out. And that's what I want. At the end of each month, if you have any personal transaction, you want to record them, but then you want to move, move the balance of that um, that account someplace else. Just move it as owner's investment, which means that you're putting money into your company. You paid with your personal funds. Okay, if you click on the personal, um, if you click on the view register right next to your personal funds bank account, your clearance account, you'll be able to see all the transactions. So you see the two expense account, and then in the end, uh, the $350. Okay, so let's suppose that uh, I had a $50 income. A client just pay it, just give a person, put my name on the check, and I ended up um, co collecting that or depositing that into my personal account. So let me just delete this here. And I'm going to create a an income going into an account that was never deposited into my checking account. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to go here and create a um, sales receipt. And I'll select any customer here. The date is right. I'm going to send it to, I can send it to undeposited funds so that I, I can follow that income transaction workflow that you're very aware right? First invoice or sales receipt. If you do the sales receipt, send it to on the positive funds, record the deposit into the bank account, and then match it in banking. Now, there's no matching here because uh, 
this this account is not linked to any bank so anything that I'm recording to this account is a manual transaction so I'm just gonna type what this is design oh $75 okay great okay so we're gonna save and close so this is sent to undeposited funds that means I have to deposit into the personal account I'll, I'll click on on the plus new and then bank deposit this is where all undeposited funds are sitting so I'm just gonna click select this transaction and um, I'm going here is automatically uh, selecting the checking account which is not the right one somebody asked me how do I um, how do I record a transaction to a different account and I just said you know when you're on the bank deposit screen you click on the arrow under the account and you select the right account but um, I think it's hard to see it unless it's hard to understand it unless you see it and this is how you do it so these are the bank accounts here if you if you don't have the bank account you have to add but here it is personal funds clearance account now you don't want to create too many bank accounts by the way you want to keep it at a minimum this one is necessary because like I said if you don't have or if you're making um, if you're making business expense on your personal account and you want to record that that's the one way you can do it okay so that's why we created it but we always zero it out at the end of the day so okay so we we recorded this deposit to the personal we're gonna save and close we're gonna see the balance now we recorded so we have two uh, expense and one income so now my balance is $375 negative means that I need to deposit some money on this account which is for the total amount of 275 you know how to do we can do a journal entry like I did before like this is the prior one or we can do a transfer remember I said you can do either or yeah I like transfers so I'm just gonna say that I'm transferring money from my owner's investment into my personal account for $275 okay so what I'm saying is that this is where I'm pulling money out so that's where I'm, I'm saying that it's from my owner's investment into my personal account so I'm pu putting money on that account check the date and save and close and it's gonna do the same thing look zero out so if you click on view register you see the four transactions so we have the initial transaction of $75 deposit the two two expenses and then the journal entry to zero out the account putting that balance into owners investment okay so zero balance over here that's what I want I can reconcile the account so if you click on view register I'm gonna reconcile this account I know it's zero balance um, I can just put zero balance as of December 20th start reconciling and you know that when I reconcile account I want to select every single transaction to make sure we're counting for all transactions all transactions are here so the little blue here on top zero difference finish now so I reconcile so it's, it's going to look nice and clean so we reconcile we accounted for everything and that's how you record per or deposit or expenses that never hit your checking your business account your checking business or your your business credit card so this was done in a personal account so you you pay bills with your personal funds and you and you deposit money your business money into your personal account this is how you record and this is how you clean that bank account that you record those transactions all right okay and this is it <laughs> this is it for this week's tutorial I hope this is useful um, if you like this video 
please share with your friends, with your co-workers, with your family, <laughs> whoever you want. Subscribe to our channel. We come back every week with new educational uh, free tutorial to help you navigate your QuickBooks Online and get your books up to date so that you can take control of your business and take it to the next level. So that's the most important part of keeping your books nice and clean and uh, reliable so you can count on that information and go to the next level. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas! <laughs> We're gonna see you next year! <laughs> no, actually, no, we'll see you next week. Still, still 2022. <laughs> but until next time, keep on smiling.